Hi, I'm Mary Harville, President and CEO of the Kentucky Lottery. Although most of you probably know the Kentucky Lottery for our scratch-off tickets and huge Powerball or Mega Millions jackpots, promoting education and workforce development in Kentucky is at the heart of what we do. 23 years ago, members of the Kentucky General Assembly dedicated Kentucky Lottery proceeds to funding college scholarship and grant programs. Since then, the largest portion of our proceeds, now $4.4 billion and counting, have gone to fund programs specifically to help Kentucky students attend college. Today, we know Kentucky's most deserving students are counting on us, and our mission of fueling imagination and funding education is more important now than ever. Thank you. When many people think of black history, they think of only a few things, that black people were slaves, and that two, Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves, and three, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, helped give blacks civil rights, and then finally, uh, Barack Obama was president. So it's just four points of black history. But from 1619, when the white lion first landed in Jamestown, Virginia in August of 1619, and when Angela from Angola uh, disembarked and the first Africans came as enslaved people. And what catapulted the wealth of this country was the free labor of black Americans. So how do we tell that story? Simmons College of Kentucky presents the Angela Project 2017, named after the first African slave to step foot on American soil. Based on the work of the Truth and Reconciliation Panels in South Africa that helped end apartheid, our task is to change the trajectory of race relations in America and public policy towards social justice. Churches first taught the nation how to divide over slavery. Now, be a part of churches across the nation teaching the nation to unite. Four national organizations with over six million constituents coming together to tackle the marvelous challenge of true racial harmony and justice. Simmons College of Kentucky, America's 107th HBCU, in conjunction with the National Baptist Convention of America International, the Progressive National Baptist Convention, and the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, will come together for this year's focus of addressing public policy and the educational crisis in black America. Make plans now to be a part of the Angela Project 2017, featuring writer and founder of Breaking Brown, Yvette Carnell, radio host and professor at Morgan State University, Dr. Jared Ball, attorney and Emmy-nominated film producer Antonio Moore, author and anti-racism activist Tim Wise, and plenary speaker, President Emeritus of Morehouse College, Dr. Robert Franklin, sponsored by Simmons College of Kentucky. The goal is to help raise awareness of the impact that slavery had upon black Americans and how that the United States has a special responsibility to rectify the injustices. Now let's have a very honest conversation. I watched Aretha Franklin's funeral and I saw Reverend Jasper Williams blame and talk about what we can do as individuals. And I juxtapose that to Dr. Cosby's eulogy, Muhammad Ali. And when I talk about the kind of leadership that we need to see, we need more Dr. Cosby. We need more people 
more people and more leaders who understand you do not fix a systemic and intentional failure with individual agency. You cannot fix what you will not face, quoting James Baldwin. So we hope to fix it, to be courageous in our, our articulation of what took place. So courageous speech, but also courageous ears. And what makes this so powerful is the courageous ears of whites who do not waffle under truth. And keep in mind, this, red, this system of redlining was not done in the public eye. This was done by the federal government and then handed over to private banks. So it was actually a federal policy done for private banks, done for the financial sector. Everything that redlining was is simply, it simply became systematic in what we call today real estate market. If you go to college and take a real estate market analysis class, you are trained how to carry this out. Now the ultimate objective is that by 2019, when we actually mark the 400th anniversary, that we can perhaps create a new trajectory for race that we won't see in our lifetime healed. Um, but maybe we can start a new trajectory. When Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go. Pressed so hard they could not stand. Let my people go. Way down, way down in Egypt's land. Simmons College, in collaboration with the Angela Project, presents 40 Days of Prayer. Beginning July the 12th and concluding August the 20th, Christians and justice-loving people from around the world will pause to commemorate 400 years of slavery. So we might reflect on where we have been and project a new course for race relations in America. On August 20th, at the culmination of the 40 Days of Prayer, the ceremony book will be used in services held across this nation. 40 days, 400 years. There's a myth that many people have that there is not much talent and capacity in black neighborhoods. That is a myth. The fact of the matter is there is untapped potential in black neighborhoods like there is untapped potential in all neighborhoods. The reason some people don't see the potential in our neighborhood is because they're not looking for it. Where Simmons is, where St. Stephen Church is, uh, is, a, is a highly segregated, concentrated poverty area. And people are making the bridge into our community because of what we have to offer that is of substance, especially in terms of intellectual substance. If you think about the great thought leaders and those who've shaped uh, American history from the black community, it is people who've been trained for the most part in HBCUs. Not only was Kamala Harris a graduate of Howard University and HBCU, and uh, so many other prominent black legislators and judges and physicians and, and a who's who of who is who in black America graduated from HBCUs. Never forget that HBCUs are just 3% of the colleges and universities in America but they graduate about 25% of all blacks with a college degree, 50% of all black school teachers, and about 75% of all black doctors. Look at what HBCUs can do, because finally, 
a university is always judged by the product that it produces. And HBCUs historically have always produced outstanding leaders for the nation and the world. We have a forum every month called the West Louisville Forum. West Louisville is where the concentration of black people live. And every month we have a forum in which people from all over the city come and pack it out. It gives us the autonomy to tell our story, to select what are the stories that need to be told. Is the Jefferson County public school system failing African-American students? Are black children falling through the cracks in Louisville public schools? Let's look at the data. As reported in Metro Council District 6, only 21% of African-American fourth graders are reading at grade level. In District 4, only 19%. Civil rights attorney Ted Gordon has reported that only 7% of all graduating black students in JCPS are college ready. Who is responsible? Who has the answers? Simmons College of Kentucky presents JCPS, Just Caucasian Pupils Succeed? The Crisis of Black Underachievement in Jefferson County Public Schools. The West Louisville Forum, Solutions for Urban America. This year, the Louisville Urban League released its first ever State of Black Louisville report. The collection of essays and data constructs an honest glimpse into the harsh realities of how African Americans in Louisville are doing with respect to health, housing, jobs, education, and justice. Give me your hand, please. For no reason at all, just stop me. Ask us what we were, what, what we were up to. The police stop that concerned an entire city. But why was we stopped? Mm -hmm. Is racial bias on the LMPD an issue that needs to be revisited? Listen to how this textbook describes slavery. The master often had a barbecue or picnic for his slaves. Then they had a great frolic. Then while working in cotton fields, they sang songs. The beat of the music and the richness of their voices made work seem light. So how has this type of thinking become so deeply rooted in Southern memory? Blame the United Daughters of the Confederacy, founded in 1894 to preserve Confederate culture for generations to come. They published a measuring rod for textbooks that urged libraries and schools to reject any books which did not accord full justice to the South. My parents are from Nigeria. Relatives, grandparents, everybody. And it would be a shame for me to try and, oh, you know what? We had it really bad 400 years ago. No, we did not. <laughs> me being here with my passport is great, but it's only because other people died to make that possible. There are some black people, if you call them African-American, they are insulted. For me, I'm black. You don't have to get so technical. You're not stepping on toes if you don't say African-American. There's a little murmuring through the audience. Black, black, black is not man. a negative word. You can trace your lineage back further than a lot of white people who came over during Ellis Island and are immigrants. So why should you say African-American and separate yourself from a country that you seem to have more ownership I, I, than the people that are keeping you from it? Black American is a cultural thing. If your, if your ancestry ain't been through what the hell our people been through, you, Barack Obama folks ain't been through what our people went right. through. Michelle, that's a system. Come on, Sally Ann. Come on, Dana. Come on. 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 And I'll save you some cake. Oh, we'll be waiting. Simmons College of Kentucky presents the West Louisville Forum, Solutions for Urban America. Spend your lunch hour at the West Louisville Forum where you'll learn more about the topic of racism versus favoritism and discrimination versus privilege. Come hear America's leading sociologist as she addresses the issue of opportunity hoarding. Because if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And I'll save you some cake. Everything that you believe about being African-American, about being a descendant of a slave in this country, everything is a lie. Everything that you think you know is a lie, and it was intentional. The only way that the, the, that the education works to close the racial wealth gap is with a surrounding uh, a support system to make sure that education can be plugged into an outlet.
And part of the reason that we don't understand that we don't have any real money is because the people with money lie. College of Kentucky presents State of the Race, Whiteout, the erasing of Black Louisville from power, privilege, and participation. In his 1967 speech, Martin Luther King Jr. identified the importance of self-interest for effective coalitions. A true alliance is based upon some self-interest of each component group and a common interest into which they merge. Join us for the June edition of the West Louisville Forum as we dissect the importance of black self-interest and address the politics of black advocacy. We owe black people something. We have a legacy of slavery. Immigrants haven't even been in this country. We don't owe the homeless. We don't owe feminists or gays who want to get married. That's what civil rights has become. There is the legacy of slavery and Jim Crow. No, I think civil rights are for blacks. You keep on pushing our buttons for the insurrection here because we ain't playing your garbage. We ain't playing your mess. My Bible says that the church of the living God is an institution that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the Bible says that we'll take it by force. That's what the Bible says. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to bring attention to a dangerous ideology threatening our democracy. That believes the American nation is defined by being Christian and the government should keep it that way. This is an explicitly Christian movement because this is an explicitly Christian country. But which Christianity are Christian nationalists actually talking about? Christianity is code word for people like us. True Americans are white, native-born, and conservative. Christian nationalism operates a lot like racism. It's so embedded in the culture of the United States. White supremacy and Christian nationalism, toxic marriage that is dividing America along religious and racial lines. The most dedicated Christian nationalists in America a century ago were the members of the Ku Klux Klan. I tell you, Leviticus 1918, love thy neighbor, it says love thy neighbor of thy people. My people are white. So what do Christian nationalists really stand for? If Christian and Christian nationalism is not about religion, it's about identity and power. We are Americans and Americans kneel to God and God alone. A vocal and influential group of people who are now becoming more radicalized and militant. I'm to the place right now, if you vote Democrat, I don't even want you around this church. You can get out. I don't care how mad that makes you. You get pissed off as you want to. You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. Let me tell you why telling our story, especially our historical narrative, is critically important because it is by the study of history that we learn the lessons of history. History teaches us. Secondly, we need to know our history because history inspires us. We learn the lessons, we get inspired. You know, one of the great tragedies of any kid's education is not to be exposed to giants that are right here in the community. And uh, perhaps one of the great autobiographies that was written by a former slave who was a hero during the Civil War was the autobiography of Elijah P. Morris. He became the first president of Simmons to show you how selfless he was and how he was only driven by the desire to have a great school. He resigned the office of president in order to bring in the giftedness and intelligence of uh, uh, William J. Simmons. Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, one of the most celebrated bishops in the AME Church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, writes of Dr. Simmons' oratory skills.
<laughs> but that was the era of oratory. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. William J. Simmons in his book, Men of Mark, is probably the most prominent profile and sketches on former slaves who achieved excellence after slavery that has ever been written. But his first sketch was the sketch of Frederick Douglass. For the first time in my life, and I suppose the first time in any colored man's life, I attended the reception of President Lincoln. The most traveled man of the 19th century. Nobody traveled more than Frederick Douglass. I could not have been more than 10 feet from him when Mr. Lincoln saw me. His countenance lighted up. And he said in a voice which was heard all around, here comes my friend Douglas. As I approached him, he reached out his hand and gave me a cordial shake. Douglas, I saw you in the crowd today listening to my inaugural address. There's no man's opinion that I value more than yours. What do you think of it? Mr. Lincoln, it was a sacred effort. The great Frederick Douglass, who, in my opinion, is probably one of the greatest leaders of the 19th century, was a close colleague of William J. Simmons. And th this type of history was here in Louisville all along, but our community did not know. And that is why black institutions are so vitally important, because black institutions help keep the story of the black experience in this country alive. You cannot read the story of our namesake as an institution, William J. Simmons, and how he emerged from slavery to become the premier black Baptist educator in the entire United States at the close of the 19th century. And most people don't know who William J. Simmons is, but William J. Simmons according to Gary Dorian, probably the preeminent ethicist at Union Theological Seminary. William J. Simmons, who was the president of Simmons College, uh, is basically the founder of the National Baptist Convention. So anyone who wants to know anything about preachers in the 19th century, it's William J. Simmons. Here is a man out of slavery could write a 900 page book and he didn't have all the tools that we have in writing books. And if he could do that out of slavery, then what is my excuse today? I'd be well said if it were not for William J. Simmons, I would not have become a journalist. He gave her her first job. Gary Dorian called him one of the preeminent intellectuals of the day, and, but he died young. So we learn history to be inspired by its achievements and its accomplishments. And finally, we learn history in order to correct its malfeasance. The reason things are the way they are today is because of the way things were organized and structured yesterday. If you want to understand, for example, race relations in the present, well, it has its roots in race relations in the past. So we learn what happened so that we will have the courage to fix it. Nineteen sixty seven and two thousand twenty are very similar. I am for law and order. I am the law and order candidate. Back then it was black power. Today it's Black Lives Matters. However trouble they may be, looting and arson have nothing to do with civil rights. But what we are now seeing on the streets of our cities has nothing to do with justice. There is uh, patience that people had with their struggle 
52 years ago. Well, in my opinion, it just left from frustration, you know. And people will not be that patient today. So looting is what you do. We learned it from you. We learned violence from you. So if you want us to do better, then damn it, you do better. President Lyndon Johnson appointed an 11 member advisory commission on civil disorders aimed to identify the root causes. 1967 riots broke out in all of the major cities in America, including here in Louisville, Kentucky. And these riots had a devastating effect. They were called riots, but they were really rebellions against systemic and structural injustice. The Kerner Report makes clear that the civil unrest in 1967 mirroring that in 2020 is not based on the idea of overthrowing the American government. This is a statement that people want to participate more fully in American democracy. Those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. The Kerner Report, the only study in American history formed by the government which established the reality of systemic racism. They clearly said in this report, white America created this situation. And guess what? White America is maintaining. The basic conclusion of the Kerner Commission report was that our nation is moving toward two societies, one black, one white, separate and unequal. One of the tragedies of the 20th century was that President Johnson did not act on the recommendations that were made in the report. And here we are, 52 years later, and what do we see? The killings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, David McAtee have led people in more than 2,000 American cities to take to the streets in justifiable protest. The best time for Kerner Commission II would have been in 1968. The second best time for Kerner Commission II is today. Simmons College of Kentucky has recently announced the formation of the Kerner Commission 2.0, not to duplicate the work of the original, but to pick up the mantle and begin the work that was laid out. And on today, the 53rd anniversary, I'm offering my support to the work of the Kerner Commission 2.0. This initiative is going to have four targets. The first is to educate the community about black issues. When people from outside of the community see problems taking place within the community, or even situations that they believe are problems, they come in with what we call a deficit based approach to solving those problems. And that deficit-based approach, it takes for granted that the community's broken. It takes for granted that the community has nothing to offer. That is not true. Scattered throughout West Louisville are indigenous, community-based institutions that are doing great things. The reason why the community is still strong is because of these institutions. Let's look at what we have in the community already. And if we have something that's working, then let's build on it. Let's support it. No one knows a community and the needs of a community like the people that live in that community. The commission will help the larger community understand what is there in West Louisville to raise awareness throughout the state about the assets. When you realize that we offer value, that this community has value, not only for Louisville, but for the larger whole United States, then when you're coming in, you're sharing your assets. You're investing in people that have the potential to make your life better. With, with, with
the splash of Ella against black excellence. Black excellence do it, make it look effortless. Black excellence do it, make it look effortless. Black excellence do it, make it look effortless. With the splash of Ella against black excellence. Black excellence do it, make it look effortless. Black excellence do it, make it look effortless. Black excellence do it, make it look effortless. With the splash of Ella against black excellence.